at 31, we're back with the same function, all right? But the directions now say find all the rational zeros and factor f of x into linear factors. And I just want to remind you of where we left off in example three. So as of example three, our possible rational zeros, we had a pretty long list of it was plus or minus one, we had a one half, we had a one fourth, we had a one eighth. What else did we have? Oh, right, we had a two and we had a four. All right, so I'm going to attempt this without my calculator and it's gonna take me a while to do it, but I wanna show you what this looks like and then I wanna show you how your calculator can help you get to the answer faster. I'm still gonna to wanna to see all the algebra, but at least it'll narrow down your search. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna go without my calculator. If, if there is a rational zero, it's in this list somewhere. So I'm gonna start with positive one and hope that it hits. So here we go. If I'm gonna guess one, let's use synthetic division. I've got descending powers of x. I've got no skipped powers, right? I see four, three, two, one, zero. So I don't need any placeholders, so eight, negative 26, negative 27, 11, and four. What am I hoping for in this remainder? A zero. If, if that's the case, I'm gonna be pretty pumped. But let's see, all right, all right. Let me go ahead, there, all right. So let's see, we've got eight, eight, um, negative 26 plus eight would be negative 18. This is negative 18, uh-oh, this is not looking good. This is gonna be what, negative 45? This is negative 45, this is negative 34, negative 34, negative 30. All right, this one wasn't it. So positive one doesn't work, I'll take that off my list. The next one that I'm gonna try, I, I usually save the fractions till the end, I'm gonna try negative one, okay? So let's see if negative one works. Let me erase all of this work. All right, here we go. So let's see what we have here. I would have eight. That would become, what, negative eight? When I added those together, I think I'm looking at, geez, negative 34. And this would be positive 34. So this would be positive seven. Ooh, this is looking good, right? Negative seven, four, come on, yeah, negative four, zero. Awesome. Okay, so I found one rational zero. Um, I still have probably three more to go, but I got one. So here we go. If negative one is a zero, right? Because f of negative one is zero, I can break down my polynomial. From the factor theorem, I know if negative one is a zero, that x plus one had to be a factor. And the remaining factor shows up here with synthetic division. So I started with an x to the fourth, I'm down one power, so we'll go eight x cubed minus 34x squared plus 7x plus four. All right, I need to get it into linear factors. This is a linear factor and a cubic factor, so I'm not there yet. Okay, so I need to try another number from this list. Now, I, I like to leave the fractions till the end, so I'm just gonna start at the opposite end. I'll go with positive four. If positive four doesn't work, I'll go negative four. And then I'll go positive two, negative two, and I'll probably save the one eighths till the end. I'm just gonna hope I find one. So let's go positive four. Now I don't need to put the four into the original, I'll just put it into the cubic, right? You, you've already broken this down into a cubic. So let's go eight, what, negative 34, seven, four. Let's see what we get here. All right, I'm really hoping for a zero there. That would make me super happy. All right, let's do eight. Um, four times eight is 32, negative 34 and positive 32 is negative two. Oh my gosh, four times negative two, sweet, negative eight, negative one, negative four. Oh my God, awesome. We got it, okay? I know you're as excited as I am. All right, let me scooch this up just so we have enough space so I can write my factor. Okay, so here we go. For my original function, I knew x plus one was a factor. I just picked up x minus four, and here's my remaining factor. Now, 
I was breaking down a cubic, so now I need to start with a squared. So this is 8x squared minus 2x minus 1. And why I can get excited is because when I get here, when I've broken it down to a quadratic, well, then I have, oops, can you see all of that? You can. Once you have a quadratic, you know that you could factor it, you could complete the square, you could use the quadratic formula, so I can find all of my zeros. So let me move this up here. Let's rewrite it so we can see it. We've got x plus one, x minus four, and then eight x squared minus two x, oops, not minus one, plus one. No, nope, minus one, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and guess and check. Let's see if I can factor this. All right, I need two things that multiply to eight x squared. I'm gonna go with two x and four x. The only thing that multiplies to one is one and one. Outer is two x, inner is four x, two and four. I can get that to be negative two. This would need to be negative. This would need to be positive. So I can see my linear factors, right? I have four of them, one, two, three, four linear factors, and I had a quartic. So here we go, I have broken down my function into linear factors, okay? All right, now, that's half of it. It also says find all of the rational zeros. So my zeros would be, well, I have a rational zero at negative one zero. I have one at four zero. This one would occur at one half zero, and this one would occur at negative one fourth zero. And in case you're not remembering how I'm finding the one half and the four, just off to the side here, imagine if you set this factor to zero using the zero product property, this would be two x was equal to one and x was equal to one half. All right, so with that, I did answer my question, right? All right, so these were my linear factors. These were my rational zeros. Oh, and it's interesting. If I had tried one half, I, it would have worked. And if I had tried negative one fourth, it would have worked. But then you also see that there's a, quite a few that um, would not have worked if I was testing them out. All right, so a couple of things that I wanna mention. Some people might be asking, well, what happened if you had tried four first and then one? So I wanna, give me a sec to get another piece of paper. I want you to see what this would have looked like if I went in the other direction. So what would have happened if I did four first? If I had eight, negative 26, negative 27, 11, and four. I want you to see that you're gonna wind up in the same spot. You're just gonna take a slightly different path. So this would be eight, this would be 32, this would be six, 24, negative three, negative 12, negative one, negative four, and zero. So that would have worked out, right? And we knew four was a zero. It just, the, the coefficients are gonna be different if you go with four first, which is fine. So here I know x minus four is a factor, and I also know eight x cubed plus six x squared minus three x minus one it is my other factor, okay? Well now let's say I tried one. So let me move this up, just so we can make sure we have it all in view. Now let's say I tried one with what was left over. So I would go one and I would have eight, six, negative three, and negative one. Oh, and I gotta be a little careful. One wasn't a zero, I'm forgetting, it was negative one. All right, if I went this way, we would have eight, negative eight, negative two, two, negative one, one, and zero. So I would have gotten that zero, and from here, I would say, well, f of x, I already knew about the x minus four. Here, I'm gonna pick up the x plus one. And what is my remaining factor? Eight x squared minus two x minus one. So you see that I wind up in the same spot that I did over here. It's just I happen to go negative one, four on this version and this four, negative one. But you wind up at the same spot. Okay. So the last thing I wanna mention before we get out of this example is how your calculator can help you out. So while this is great, and back in the 90s, we didn't have our TI-84 calculators, so we had to do stuff by hand, you got your technology now, so let's use it. So what I mean by that is if I give you a polynomial, the first thing I would recommend is just plug it in here and see what it looks like. 
See if you can spot some zeros so you have some good guesses for starting points. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit zoom six. Now keep in mind, this is a quartic with a positive coefficient, so it should look like a W. Let's hit zoom six, see what I can find out. You can kind of see the W, right? Heads down, up, down, and then up. I can't see that minimum, but you can see some of the zeros in here. And if I was guessing, this one looks like it happens at one, two, three, four, right? And if I wasn't sure, I could always check it. I could say, hey, get me the zero between three and five. And it would say, hey, you know what? There's a zero at four. And once I realize there's a zero at four, I can use synthetic division for that. Right? And then these two look pretty small, but that one looked like negative one. So I can say, hey, can you get me the zero? And this time I'll use Blinky. It'll just take me a little while. Let me go to the left of negative one. So there I'm on the left side of it. Let me move to the right side. I'm gonna hit enter, enter through guess, and there's my other zero. So that would help me use that, that number for synthetic division. So again, I would always recommend use your graphing calculator to get a starting point. All right, so I'm going to write this out here. Use your graphing calculator to get a starting point. All right, we can list all of the possible rational zeros, and that's fine. Oops, you can't see that. Excuse me. There we go. Um, you can make that list, it's fine, but you're also going to use technology to help you get started. All right, so with that, you can see we've got a pretty nice looking function in example five, so I'm going to hit the pause button, and when we come back, we're going to do a gigantic quartic, all from scratch. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.